How shit is the end of the season? It's horrible. Um, you're in the same boat as me. Like, you're leaving a club you've been at for your whole life. Yeah. Well, yesterday I left the, the WhatsApp group. That's a sacred place, the WhatsApp right. group. It is a sacred oh. place. It's like, that's it. All communication's gone. Oh, my God. Hello and welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload with uh, Ryan Wilson and Max Leif. And shortly, uh, we'll be joined by England and Lions winger Jack Knoll to help break down an epic weekend of European rugby. But firstly, Ryan... You said Franco listens to the show, even after our pleading last week to get you involved in the final. And despite your stellar 13 years of service, everything you've done for the Warriors, there was no place for you in the match day 23. I'm sorry to build it up in this way, but from that decision, you can sort of see the whole thing unraveling, really, can't you? How livid were you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was gutted. I was absolutely gutted, boys. I can't. I can't believe. You know, we thought we didn't think this. We messed about and we joked and we said, "Oh, he's obviously saved me for the big one." But um, I even had to beg, beg my way to be water boy. Um, so at least I got that. How did that come about? Like, how did you do that? Talk me through the begging. I, I no. I basically just said to him, "By the way, I'm going to run the water." And <laughs> no, he, no. So you just stated it. You didn't even beg. You were just like, "Yeah." And, and it, you could tell he, he thought he mulled it over for, a, and I was like. Like, at least give me that. And then uh, he basically came to me before and shook my hand and said, um, you're going to run water. And I, it, I, it was like a, I was like a child. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, in it. It still works like that until the day you retire. Oh, unless you're like one of those Teflon dons. Thank you. Thank you. But um, man, the father of four. <laughs> I'm out <I'm> of mission. <laughs> thank you, master. <laughs> I'm so grateful, master. <laughs> this I feel like this. Um, this you might as well just bin the script today. There's no, <laughs> there's no point even reading off this script today because we've got Nolsey on in a minute. We're gonna get him to get really like we're gonna get him to let loose. I see midball. Yeah, we want catharsis, therapy, oh. ranting and raving. I want another ten grand fine for him at the end of this, right? So that's the nice. first. Thing. Secondly, I've got the world's worst hangover. I've been on the piss for four days straight now. Yeah. Yeah. You're I, I'm in a, a really bad way. It's um, in your jowls. Mate, you've definitely yeah, got more yeah, yeah, yeah. wrinkles with that. My, 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 my nine-year-old son just had to wake me up and said, Dad, you've got your podcast. <laughs> I was asleep on the sofa. It's his birthday. He's not <laughs> I'm in a bad way, but boys, we had our players and partners dinner last night and it was emotional. Boys, the Kiwis did a hacker for me. Oh my God. It was honestly like I walked off stage. I had no idea. And Cole Forbes, he got a few of the boys together and was like, we're doing it. Like we're going to give Wilson a hacker. And mate, I stood there and I was like, what are they up to? And they walked over and I swear to God, bawling my eyes out. Bawling my eyes out. I was gone. Absolutely gone. It's so emotional. It was um, ab- absolutely incredible. It was um, probably one of the best things I've ever, ever witnessed. I've got oh, a beer. No, so I'm gonna, so, yeah, get the hair of the dog in you. Better. I mean, that's class. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And uh, yeah, and then I got very drunk again. Yeah, no doubt. I don't officially today. Mm. I don't have a job. I know. Now it's, it's, all, it's all over. The tome could be closed forever. I officially, today, I'm still getting paid to the end of the month, but officially don't actually have a job. I've got four kids. Got a mortgage, got a house, and I don't have a job. Yeah, yeah, but you've got your finger in many pies. You're also got that bus. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, but that does sell the bus. We have got some NFTs. Does that not give you anxiety, Mark? Fuck yeah! I'm like yeah. sort of dying inside listening to that. It's that yeah, scary. Yeah, but Mark's in like a super mega power couple, so like he's fine. <laughs> if he goes down. His woman will hold the fort down. Whereas you, you're fucked, right? <laughs> oh, anyway, go on then, Mark. You want to ask some more questions about rugby, yeah? Did both of you watch the, the Glasgow Toulon vinyl? Yeah, I just watched Baptiste just yeah. tearing holes and everything. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I um I lost a bit of respect for Ches and Colby. Why? That bit at the end. Up. That oh, bit of right at the end. What the fuck was that? I genuinely was going to ask you about that. For those who didn't see it, explain what happened, Wills. Oh, God. Not only that, like, he obviously, he melted Seb Cancellari a couple of times. And it, they were two good shots, but then the old ruffle of the head. And then... Oh, you oh, love that, though, right? Yeah, no, but but when you, you've run away with it, pretty much. Oh, yeah, no need now. 
Uh, no need now. It's right at the yeah. end. No need now. And yeah, I, like, I was, I was that close in my mind. I thought, Do you know what? This is it. Your last ever chance. You're, you're never going to be in the, just run on the pitch and just start scrapping. I thought, why not? And then I, I, I had to hold myself back. Um, but then at the end, at the end, where he ran backwards with the ball, like carried on running, waiting, 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 waiting to kick the ball out. Uh, like, seven star on you. Uh, absolutely. Fucking respect. Just seemed really shitty play because it was already 80 minutes were gone. He'd just kick it straight out, but he just held on to it. But it, it, all the other, though, big Brian Aluanese, my big brother, he was uh, a legend. Bastro, even he came up, had a chat with him. He's retiring. Like, really lovely, humble men. Um, big Sergio. Had a had a good chat with him. Um, it was um, it was quite nice. But yeah, that that one that one little bit with Chosen Cole that pissed me off. Let's start it from the start though. Um, Will, so obviously you guys going down nineteen forty three. For those who didn't see it, to Toulon, but it was all over by half time. Can't really sugarcoat it. Seemingly saving, you know, the Warriors' worst performance of the season for for that most important of matches. What what actually went wrong? They were good. They were good. My no via level. Yeah, he's he's a savage, isn't he? He's just big, big avatar, like just crazy, crazy athlete. He was unbelievable. Juan Acolo, he was he was on fire. Like they 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 had some um some of their big players step up and play pretty well. Um, we like I said, we just left it too long. But um, yeah, it's a it's a shame that we two worst performances uh, left it for the two biggest games. It does seem a bit like Franco. Or the sort of Champions League final Guardiola by making a few bizarre decisions, uh, leaving you out, obviously, the biggest one. Uh, the decision to yeah. bench uh, George Turner and Richie Gray, respectively, obviously, Scotland's what, first choice hooker and line out forward. Uh, likes of Rory Darge, British and Irish line, Ali Price. We've, we've all got 2020 hindsight vision, but really quite baffling. Do you think he sort of overthought the selection and, and game plan? He always comes out with this thing. He says, "I've got a plan. I've got a plan." He always says he's got a plan, um, but the plan didn't work, did it? Because leaving Richie Gray on the bench and the lineout fell apart a little bit. And if you leave it too late, he got fifteen minutes. The big fella's been outstanding all season. Like he's been incredible. And then to have him on the bench in a in a final, terrible decision. Um, I would have had him starting. And George Turner wasn't even in the match day twenty three. If I was the coach, I would have done it differently. That's well. That's all you needed to say. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Mm. perfect. I'm diplomatic of you, Max. Have you been on the piss this weekend? No, bro. I need to show you something. Oh, oh no, 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 no! I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. Don't show. It. Can I guess before you show it? Yeah. Your missus is pregnant. No. <laughs> no. My face was pregnant. Look. <laughs> oh shit. Bro, my face was pregnant. Look at that. Oh, my God. Lads, I was in the hurt locker for most of last week. It is the worst pain I've ever experienced. I was in an opiate daze like you are right now, Ryan, just high off my kite on codeine. Anything I could get my hands off, I was scrabbling through the medicine cabinet. I found, like, the quaaludes from 1989 down there. I was, like, battling. Yeah, so basically, lads, many years ago, I got a root canal on one of my molars. Anyway, on and off, I've had these infections. Eventually, I had to go get a look at it. He was like, yeah, you got a bit of an infection. Just just have some antibiotics. You'll be fine. I'll put a cap on it. So we put the cap on it. Anyway, this was only a couple of weeks ago. And then it came back with a vengeance. And within 48 hours, it, it exploded into this oh. kind of massive tumory abscess of the gods. It's so random. It was so horrendous. You look like Glenn Quagmire. Yeah, I've got that a lot. Giggity, giggity, giggity. And um, <laughs> mate, I was, oh, it was some kind of pain. And I was like, just pull him out, pull him out. I went in there and was just take that bastard out of my mouth. So right now I'm just. Oh, you're missing more teeth. Molar free. He was bringing down morale. We had to pull him out. He was a, a toxic, toxic personality in the changing room that is my mandible. Oh, so you've had to stay off of booze then? Yeah, mate I, was, oh, mate, I was delirious at one point. I was just like, this is just not here. This is so painful. Well, we are delighted to be joined by a previous European champion who's heading to the now two-time and reigning European champions, Lara Rochelle. It's Jack Nold. I, I don't know. That's not official yet, mate. You're not allowed to say that. Are you not? Is that not, not official? I don't know where I'm going yet. Are you in a fucking classroom? Yeah, no, what are you I'm, doing? I'm, I'm, I'm still at Sandy Park, lads. You're doing what I'm going to do. You're just never going to leave. 
I'm not, I've already wrote my name on the board for next year's teammate. So, just how are still, we, lads? I'm still hanging. I'm, we've had a four day four day session, so mm. I'm in a bad way. Max has got no teeth left. Yeah, I, I had to put an abscess, so I've had a rough week. It's been horrible. Oh. This old boy. Yeah, and Mark, Mark's missus is loaded, so he's got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? That's the important question. Why are you still at Sandy Park? I thought you'd left. No, I've had a few injections in my knee and stuff. Um, so I've, I'm in like a little bit of a, a weird moment where I've not left the club yet. Yeah. But they're still looking after me. So yeah, I'm just doing a bit of rehab and stuff. Just the ghost of Jack Noel. Yeah, just hovering around. Right? Sandy Park, yeah. Got you. I had a pretty, uh, MCL grade two tear against Stormers here. And then... Um, then I rehabbed it in two weeks, which is probably a bit stupid. Um, played against La Rochelle. Um, obviously, didn't go to plan. Um, so, yeah, complete waste of time. Um, but now I'm, yeah, just just uh, trying to pick up the pieces from that from that game. How shit is the end of the season? It's horrible. And how bad is it? Because you're, you're in the same boat as me. Like, you're leaving a club you've been at for your whole life. Yeah. What a weird feeling, mate. How... It, you just can't process it. Mate, well, mm. yesterday I... What did I do yesterday? I left the, the WhatsApp group, which is, which is horrible. Oh, that is, I had to do that. That's it. Like, yeah. I think... I think Like, you do your... You do your speeches, you have your last... You have your last piss up and everything. That's one thing. But when you officially leave the WhatsApp group, it's like, that's it. All communication's gone. Oh, that's my a, God. That's a sacred place, the WhatsApp yeah, group. It is a sacred oh. place. Um, I don't, I don't think... It's horrible, it? it is horrible. Well, so you're clinging in there. Genuinely, I've said to the boys already. How I'm, fucking I'm, leave it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna empty my locker. I'm it's just so leaving needy. It. Like they just <laughs> never going it off. Glasgow. <laughs> I don't have a fucking job. I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, get this. Te- technically, the boys start pre-season um, when I'm still in contract. I could rock up here and be like, "All right, boys, got a bit of pre-season, have we?" <laughs> yeah, I, I think you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just sit there with a tub of Ben and Jerry's in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> that Liberios. Yeah. Can't come in, have breakfast and leave. <laughs> have you emptied out your locker and stuff like that? Yeah, yep, did that, mate. That was horrible. So, well, yeah. Were you on your own when you did it? Well, or no, you watch- well there's, like, there's like 50 of us leaving, isn't there? So we all did it on the same day. So you got, you got ho- around my seats are Hoggy, um, Harry Williams, uh, Ben Moon, uh, myself, Dave viewers, Dicky. So we oh. all kind of just did it at the same time. We were like looking at each other, yeah. thinking, "Oh shit, this is this is this is weird, man." When... That's the boardroom right there. That's the <laughs> of the club right there. <laughs> just all <laughs> leaving at the same time. Then we left. We left. Who did we leave? We left in, in our little seating area. We left Slady, Jack Yendall, uh, Alec Hepburn. They're the three. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, we're like right. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Uh, it is brutal. It is absolutely brutal, isn't it? I don't know. I know. But yeah, it was part of it. And we had our we, we do our like leaver speeches and stuff in front of the boys, which is you know, I've seen I've watched it for twelve years now of lads leaving. And it's horrible sitting there and watching. And then to have to do it yourself, I was just like, This is this is minging. Yeah. I always leak when I see the boys like just battling to get their words out. I just yeah. get it. I'm just like the empathy hits me and I'm just like yeah, you see the boy's shoulders going and stuff. Yeah, like, and you're like, oh, God, he can't even talk. And then he just hands the mic back. He's like, yeah. huge specimens of men just fucking losing their shit. It's weird. <laughs> and very touching, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. we well, Ours was, yeah, we fully sent it yesterday. It was players and partners only. Oh, see, um, that's that's the dream, that's, isn't it? I'd love to be able to do something like that. There should be that. That's That should be mandatory, actually. Every every club you go to, that, that should be, that should yeah. be contracted, that you have a date. And this, and you've got to be there. I don't care whether you're on holiday or whatever. You, you, you as a contract, are you as a player got signed a contract saying you've got to be there? Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's that's we've done it. I, well, we've like I said, we've done it 13 years since I've been here, and uh, I've dreaded the moment I had to get up and say goodbye. And oh, uh, oh, you, you got you got to do your chat in front of everyone there. Yeah, no, I had to get up and say oh. thank you. I couldn't like it like, like blubbering. <laughs> <laughs> And then Nolsey, they the, the Kiwi boys got up and did a hacker for me at the end. And I oh, was, that's yeah. class. God. That is cool. That's so cool, man. Jack, is it really weird that you've got so many, you know, guys who've been there, they're whole like yourself, Luke Cowan, Dickie and stuff, but you're all, if you'd left like last year, you'd be getting more of a send off than you currently are. I think for me, it's a little bit more special, to be honest. I know I was not special leaving the club, don't get me wrong, but the fact that 
if I was leaving by myself, I think it would be a bit harder to to leave the club. The fact that the other than Slady, the group that I joined the club with, um, we're all leaving at the same time. I think does make it a little bit easier for me because you know I'd always I still have FOMO as it is, but you know I suppose it makes it a little bit better that the fact they're all going, we're all doing different things now. Whereas if all the boys were still at the club next year, it would be yeah. a bit like, oh, I'm, I'm, am I missing out? What's going on? But the fact we're all kind of going has made it a little bit easier for me. Um, yeah, but don't get me wrong, to leaving the club anyway, like is after after the last 10, 12 years is is horrible. So yeah, like 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 we said, then we're in this middle stage now where I'm like, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm coming into the club and I'm a bit like, should I be here? Like boys are boys are talking about pre season and stuff, and I'm like in the corner doing my own rehab. I'm like, but <laughs> it's like a new player again. <laughs> when do you start moving across to uh, to France? Um, whenever they probably start drink stop drinking. To be honest, uh, like. <laughs> Mid mid, I mean, I'm aiming for like mid mid July. So at the moment, I'm not too sure. Obviously, uh, I'm not sure of the team I'm joining yet. But um, when they finish playing, uh, I will uh, I'll head over there then. Are you like officially not allowed to say that you well, are? Nothing's been nothing's been announced yet, mate. I don't I don't really know what's going on. Yeah, you don't want the old Karen Dicky there. <laughs> The Nicky drunk tank, mate. What like? If, yeah, was that was that a piss up or was that medical? <laughs> I don't know the ins and outs of it. All I know he was very sheepish when he came back. But I don't think he's going to struggle. You know, but I think he'll have a stay at the club, um, which would be good for him. But I don't think he's going to be struggling for offers. To be fair, yeah, too right. Yeah, it's right. Their loss. Their loss. <laughs> Have you got any plans for off season? No World Cup. Not doing the World Cup. Obviously, it was a bit of a hard, des- hard decision not to. Not to put myself in for selection for the World Cup, um, but I thought it was probably one that I had to make for myself um, and for my family as well. So we're gonna we're gonna make the most of being back home in Cornwall. We'll probably spend the next next few weeks in there. We've got a testimonial game uh, or tournament um, at Sandy Park on the third of June, uh, which Red Bull are going to take over for us, which will be pretty cool. Um, so I've got a few events and stuff that I, I need to do and, and and different things like that before before I head over. Yeah. Take us through the mindset for that, for making that decision because it's a massive call, right? Yeah, uh, obviously Eddie leaving, um, and then Sport is coming in. And obviously, look, I, I've been in, I was in a contact to start with Borfers, and obviously he 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 let me know that I wasn't going to be involved in the Six Nations, which was you know completely fair enough. New coach, um, new ideas. So you know, I was, I was I was happy with that. I was like, look, it's pretty cool. It's my last year at the club anyway, so you know, I really get to focus on on trying to do the best I can do for the club and trying to get us into, you know, into these big games at the end of the season. So, you know, you come to that stage then where it's a bit like, right, probably the ship sailed for me now um, in terms of the England stuff. You know, there's, you know, the boys done very well during the Six Nations that were playing on the wing and stuff. And, you know, there, there, there does come a stage where you need to start, you know, thinking about your family and thinking about your future and stuff like that. So, you know, I had these opportunities then to to speak to other clubs and, and dis- discuss about my future. And obviously you have a, when you when you do sign abroad or you sign anywhere, you have an option to sign pre World Cup or post World Cup. Um, and for me, you know, I, I made that decision then that you know it's probably best for my family and myself to 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 sign the contract pre World Cup. Um, I'm sure it'd be a bit different if um, you know I was talking to Steve all the time and I was understanding. You know, since then I have spoke to Steve and I, obviously I had to let him know about my decision because uh, I, I think I was in plans for the for the World Cup. You know, especially for the maybe the first little bit of the you know the first get together as a, as the big squad um but like i said for me i kind of made a decision not to do that and uh, and to make sure that my family gets settled in 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 france and and make sure that i get settled in france so i get to go to my new club and and and, and be the best i can and hopefully win some more trophies the change from eddie to steve and then your communication with steve is that the main driver of you going across to france no i, I, I wouldn't say it was the, the, the main driver i think maybe maybe post world cup it would have been a uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have been in England anyway, but I, I definitely had had the option to stay and push for the World Cup and, and be involved in the World Cup still. Um, but I think, yeah, probably my main my main issue was the uh, the fact that you know I, I didn't have a lot of talk. And, and don't get me wrong, like I don't expect to be uh, speaking to Steve every day um, and him letting me know what's going on because at the end of the day, he's a new coach of England. He's you know extremely busy, and the Six Nations is stressful enough. So. You know that wasn't. There's no. It's not his fault. It's not anyone's fault, really. It's just more of the one where I had to had to look at that and think. You know, I'm probably not going to be involved in the squad as much as I want to be. Um, that's probably my main decision then to to start thinking about other other things and and what what is best for my family at that stage. 
There are loads of injuries, though. Are you already you've signed for this pre World Cup contract now, so regardless, you're just going to rehab and then you start a new season in France. Yeah, unfortunately, it's it a hard decision. Obviously, I was thinking about it for weeks and weeks, and as much as I'd love to do another World Cup, this would be my third World Cup, and for for me, my World Cups have not been you know plain sailing. Uh, obviously, everyone knows what happened with the England World Cup, uh, the stuff on the field, the stuff off the field. Um, and then obviously not even getting out of our group. So that was frustrating of being a young kid and they're you know, only playing the last game against Uruguay. But then obviously the, the Japan World Cup, which was again even more frustrating for me, the fact that, you know, I was very much in in, in Eddie's vision, but we played that that Saracens game uh in the final. Um and I and I injured my ankle and my knee. Um so I had to have an operation on my on, on my ankle and it was just a rush then to get back, you know. I was trying to rehab a long-term injury in a short period of time, thinking that I could I could go to I could play in the World Cup. And obviously, Eddie being there, he backed me. He brought me along the whole time, and I think I finally got fit for the last pool game uh, against Argentina. Uh, and then I scored that try, but I tore my hammy. <laughs> so I was like, "This is this is great. Like this couldn't have gone any worse for me now." So, you know, obviously that was frustrating in itself, not to actually be able to to perform and actually have a World Cup that I wanted to wanted to do, but. You know, like I said, as much as I'd like to have done this one and given us a good crack, you know, you sometimes you've got to read, you know, between the lines and and understand that you're probably not in the coach's favour. Um, so don't get me wrong, I would love to have, have fought for my position. I would love to have, have got myself back, you know, into playing. But you know, like I said, family comes first for me, so I had to make sure that they're they're looked after first. Jeff, speaking of injuries, this must be one of your most. You, you've played a lot of games this season, haven't you? I played a lot of games. Like the last, the last, the the last two, worked. The plan worked, pal. Remember we spoke about it? I know. The last two years, mate. Yeah, obviously, mate. obviously yeah. against France last year, Six Nations, I jumped up for the high ball, landed on my wrist and snapped my wrist. But you can't help that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. And over this season, I've been, yeah, top, well, it's finished now. Yeah, I've been, yeah, yeah. I've played most, every single game. Yeah, but you're back drinking. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. I knew you were no, going to no, I knew that was coming up. Really because good. you you said you'd given up drinking, and I, now you're I back did. drinking. No, I'm only drinking off season, then. and I'm like like a bit like you now. I, pre- I think I've drunk every single day, and my missus thinks I'm an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> but I'm telling you, the plan, mate, the plan during the season. Mate, I'm so stoked for you. That's class. Mate, and I, I, it's, it's, it honestly is. The, I know it was blown up a lot. Like, oh, Jack's not drinking, and it's the rugby culture and stuff like that. But but mate, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made, and I think like. Obviously, I've got to see how the future goes and stuff like that, but I'm definitely going to try and stick to that. I'm not too sure what the culture's like. That won't last two minutes in La Rochelle, mate. <laughs> yeah, but no, but they <laughs> drink in a more civil, kind of tempered way. My yeah, friend. I think oh, it'd be different, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Howie, <laughs> by the way, look like looking, go on like social media now. Like, if you click your phone open today and you see like the scenes over there, how like oh, mate, you it's must level in it. The Bay of Biscay is just going absolutely mental. <laughs> it is, it's different level, isn't it? Like, what? Let, let alone how good the game was, the the aftermath, and you can completely understand why. But the 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 support and the, yeah. the amount of people, like the videos of them jumping in the sea and everything over there, like I was like, oh my god, there's there's probably more people there than bloody watching the game. Um, but yeah, it was unbelievable. Like well, yeah, looking at it's all over social media, like you said. But but I think it kind of shows that obviously I spoke to a couple of players and they're already like, yeah, we're gonna do it three times next year, three times in a row, and I'm like. The three peat baby. What? <laughs> Nelsie, that must that must like make it a lot easier. Even the club you've been at for twelve years, however long you've been there for, that must make it slightly easier knowing that you're going to I reckon the best club on the planet at the moment. Because we spoke about it. that's like the two long of old. Remember like all the legends like Gitto's Bastro. Pilo, pilo, pilo. Yeah. That, that Larish the new era of that. That must make it a lot easier, eh? Yeah, I mean, 100%. I think, I think the fact that they're so driven to, you know, obviously speaking with the coaches, speaking with Rog, obviously, uh, last season, you know, you can, they didn't want me to come down and just be happy uh, to just play and, and you know, to play a few games and stuff like that. They they wanted to make it very clear that, that I wanted to, I, well, I wanted to make it very clear as well that I wanted to come down and still win stuff. Um, and I just show, I, I just think that's the the drive that they have of into winning. I think you know Rog is obviously a massive, you know the way the boys speak about him. You know I've never I've never met him properly, but the way the boys speak about him, the way they, you know the way he speaks after games and stuff like that, you can tell that, you know they they want this and they want to win stuff. And and like I said, even speaking to a couple of boys after they've just won it, you would have thought they would be absolutely you know legless and off their face still. But 
you know, they're still talking about right next year we want to go do it again already. And I'm just like, this is this is this is amazing. Like they they obviously the balance down there of on field and off field is 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 pretty suitable for me. Um and the way I like to live. But obviously what they what they're talking about and what they're doing on the field is that's that's what excites me the most. They got a lovely little like Sunday market down there. We went and played. Oh, just wandered down into the market. <laughs> nice croissants there. Oh, <laughs> lovely <laughs> couple of baguettes. I can see you. Provence oh, saucisson. Yeah. Take it down on your push bike in the morning. Oh, mate. Couple of bottles of rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take my motorbike down, mate. How cool that? That's going to be sick. I'd drive bombing around my little piss pot helmet. It'd be brilliant. Oh, you know, I've said it before. I'll go down there for free. If they need. <laughs> A back row or like a kit man, I'll come and do it for free. And well, that's just... what we're saying. I didn't say I was going out there to play, mate. I am down there for free, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, were you watching the match and supporting your potentially new teammates and, and going slightly nuts watching it? Yeah. I think just as a neutral, it was it would have been amazing to watch. But yeah, to watch it knowing that I could potentially be there as well next year was um was even it was even more special. And the fact that I've you know, obviously we played against them a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I met a few of the lads properly and, and you know, spoke to them and, and obviously got to know what they're like and what they're about. Um, so, yeah, straight away, I was like, I was desperate for those guys to to win that and, and, and to, to do what they, you know, to achieve what they wanted to achieve. So, yeah, obviously it meant a little bit more for me to, to watch out. So I had a little bit more, you know, investment in it. But, yeah, to see to see that and to see the, like we mentioned, the the atmosphere back at La Rochelle as well was, was, was mental. I actually met most of your new colleagues, your director of rugby, your coaches on the Thursday night um, might have snuck out for a pint of Guinness in Dublin the night before the game, <laughs> even though 24th man. So I knew that I was only running water. I was only on the right, but they were, they were all out on the piss. Uh, they were out on the piss on Thursday night, actually. Really? And uh, yeah, some good blokes. I was chatting to Teddy Tomer. Yeah. So, uh, oh mate, you'll fit in there. You'll be all right. You'll it's be all right. Fun, mate. It's going to be good fun. Boys, be honest, right? Leinster going 17 nil up before La Rochelle even drawn a breath. Three tries in whatever it was, 11, 12 minutes, the fastest try in Champs Cup history. Did we think there was going to be any other result except an absolute hiding uh, by the Irish boys? To see those tries happen so quickly, and it, yeah, was it 17 nil? Yeah. Thinking, oh my God, like you, you, you see teams get to finals, and you know, it's happened to us. It happened to us. Um, out in La Rochelle, do you know what I mean? You uh, out in, in Bordeaux when you play La Rochelle, you you see these big games, and you see sometimes players then or teams just don't quite. They kind of get shell shocked a little bit, and you you think what has just happened. And if there was any other game that went seventeen nil, you probably think that's game over. But I don't know, like I don't know, I might be a bit biased now or anything. But I I remember sitting there thinking like this definitely isn't in, it definitely isn't game one. Um, you know, you you get you get one score, you get two scores in, and then before you know it, you're you're straight back in it. And if there's one team that can score tries like that, it's, it's La Rochelle. And like I said, I learned that a couple of weeks before when we got you know absolutely hounded by them, and, and they ran so many tries past us. So, you know, if there is one team that can get back in it quickly and and have the belief to do that, um, especially after the experiences they've had over the last few years and playing in these big games, you know, La Rochelle were definitely going to do that. And I think you know the score going back in at half time. Um, whatever the score was, I can't remember, but you knew that you know it's going to be a completely different game to how it to how it started, and you could see them edging back, edging back, and then you know Leicester, whether they took their foot off the gas, I'm not too sure, but I, I definitely think you know Larishal certainly made them stop playing, um, and then you could see them picking up their tries, and they kind of got the ball the ball rolling a little bit, and you could see you could see where that game was going. That's sometimes the worst thing to happen for a team is to like go that far ahead. I mean, look, look at what happened to us. We went over to Munster, twenty 28- eight nil up or something at half time and then you almost you take the foot off the gas and everything then swans up. and I reckon that's what happened to Leinster absolutely butchered it like and fair play to La Rochelle you just knew watching it you just knew that they there was they were going to put I, I I could tell straight away these boys will pull this back even like they because they knocked two two um penalties over as well and like put it out of distance a little bit and you thought mm. it's getting harder now but I don't know. I reckon that's that's uh, the mark of a fucking some special team. Yeah. Is that to come I think, back? I think as soon as as soon as you could see the build up before, but Dante's try, you know, as soon as he finished, as soon as he scored that, it was a bit like, like you could see them starting to roll them a little bit as well, and you could see mm-hmm. Leinster and thinking, oh oh shit, what's going on here? Like this is start went to plan, but now this isn't going to plan. Um, and you could see when he finished that, and it was a hell of a try. You could think, well, you you, you start to see it happen now, but there's so many. 
Right, this is the thing with rugby. There's so many things that happen in that game which could have, you know, swung it both ways. You know, obviously once Dante got that yellow card, I was thinking, this is this is game over now. Like like nothing against him, but like you're like thinking, Jesus Christ, how hard is this gonna be now? They got a yellow card, they're gonna be pinned into the corner. But then a couple of minutes later you get the red card and you're thinking because I thought Leinster were going to score then or at least get three points or penalty. And then you get the red card and then boom, game gets blown open again. You've got the penalties, you've got, you know, kick down the touchline and you're thinking, they're, they're going to do this. So, like, the game can swing so easily and it literally took one moment in that game for it to go the other way. But the fact that they got themselves back into it to a position where, you know, they were, they were leading was, was special in itself. I kind of agree with Rye though. Like, I feel like because Leinster got so far ahead so quick, they got like, they started playing differently. I feel yeah. like they lost the ambition and attack and stuff with possession. Yeah, oh, I almost got anxious about the scoreboard being in Dublin. Man, it was weird. I've never seen such a mad moment, like momentum shift with such good teams. You could see, you could see Leinster at the start buzzing though. Like, you know, yeah, like, they, they, they got a few shots on Skelton, Henshaw's yeah. shit talking him. I was like, this is tasty. Yeah. Everyone's flying into each other. And I was like, this is going to get delightful. I yeah. can't and you can see the celebrations after each try. Like, like everyone yeah. celebrates try as well, but you could see them all smiling. You could see yeah. them laugh when they're running <laughs> yeah. back. And I'm thinking, oh, I felt like fair enough. Like, Pat Conan giving the, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were bang so, on, they were. It was the way they were celebrating, like they thought, oh, we've done this already. Before yeah. time, you could tell they were like, we're running away with this. We're rolling this one. Oh, but there you have it. Two, what, I mean, they had that, obviously, Munster. They lost Munster recently as well. I reckon that's like knocked a bit of confidence out of them. And then they obviously got pumped up for yeah, the first 25 that. minutes. You that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, you did say that last week. It's, uh, and I, I, I believe it or not, I watched the game and I actually watched a few interviews after, which I was like, my, my missus came down. She was like, what the hell are you doing? And still watching it. I was like, yeah, I know, but I'm finding it quite interesting. I'm learning stuff here, babe. I'm learning it. Um, but even then they were talking about like, obviously, Larachelle beat them last year. Like, And then was there stuff going on then mentally with them when they get the finals and they get to the last minute of the games? Like, is it, is it, is it playing like, is it playing stuff with their minds and stuff now? So The new, the new, the new Claremont potentially, yeah. <laughs> Um, so how good that a Ty Furlong comes along comes across so well in interviews, man. He cracks me up when he was answering those questions. Yeah. Like, well, where am I going with this? You're just giving me existential questions. What happened, what happened like, in the tunnel? <laughs> what, what happened in the tunnel after? We think that there's a there was a disrespect. There was a disrespect at the coin toss by James Ryan, and that was the that was apparently what may have been a bit of the sort of touch paper lighting for uh, for that half time stuff, but. Um, I don't know. Apparently, he wasn't. You know, there was no eye contact. That would. That's one of the thing. One of the angles that we've heard. Um, that could just be absolute fucking bollocks. But well, between uh, Aldrich and him, yeah, apparently. And then um, Roger said that it was. Yeah, they didn't in, like the way that things were in that in that build up. And if there's a man that's passionate about it, oh, Roger's that. I've seen oh. him picking off on the sidelines, mate. Um, he and so that's why I can understand. Obviously, something's kicked off in the tunnel because he is a he's a very passionate man, and he doesn't oh, no. mince his words. He doesn't yeah. mince his words. Yeah, I'm 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 buzzing to to get to know him and to to see how he coaches and stuff, and see and see what he's what he's like there. Because everyone, all the boys that you speak to are like he's he's absolutely phenomenal. And just from his interviews and stuff like that, you know, he is very interesting on on what he says and how he comes across and. Uh, you can kind of tell straight from the, my first chat of him, you can tell how much he wanted to win and, and winning's everything. But, you know, he's very much, you know, he's a family man. He m wants to make sure that everyone has a good time off the field as well. Um, so, like, he's kind of got, it's, it's, it sounds like he's got the full package at the moment, which is which is, which is is very exciting for me to, to to hopefully get down there and tap into. I've got a few things I need to to, to ask you. Firstly, because I've just, just been just going from my head, right? Because if I'm turning up to La Rochelle for pre-season, and there's Big Will Skelton with a bottle of red wine, and he's like, "Nolsey, do you want a glass? What you're gonna you're gonna go? <clears throat> I'm sorry, mate, I don't drink. I don't reckon he, he's a peer pressure guy, bro. Yeah, I am uh, a peer pressure guy. I've got a rubber arm. I ain't gonna lie. But like, you know what? Like, they, I, I, what, maybe, maybe when I get when I get there, look, I've joined enough. Well, I'm not joining enough teams, but I know what it's like to join a new team and to be involved. You have to, you got to go into the, their culture massively. Do you know what mm. I mean? Which you know, I love. I love to do that. Like red wine is my is my guilty pleasure. Do you know what I mean? And you're not going to get much better down there. So you're in the land of the vine, exactly. I, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to have a dabble at the start. But it's and been, look at that. 
I've already made done. excuses myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's like, good. Oh, that's good to hear. You make yeah, what, sure what, 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 what I want to do, what I want, what I do want to do though, is is go down there and, and and play a while as well. Like the fact that I've got quite a bit of time off in this off season now. Um, I'm certainly going to make sure I'm in the best state that I I can be to go down there. That's why I'm getting these injections done on my knee. I'm I'm back in my knee brace, which is shite um, during an off season, but you know you've got to do it. So I, I do want to go down there and you know put my best foot forward and 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 hopefully be involved in the in these big games with them. So um, you know at the same time as I will be buying into their culture and the way they they perform down there. You know I've I've, I've very much got to to make sure that I am at my best as well. Oh, I'm envious. I'm let's let's just take a quick look at the at the Leinster side. Whilst of course we enjoyed, I mean, did you see Ogara's um, celebrations though when he when the when the final whistle happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he put his hand through the desk, didn't he? He was put his hand up a cut the desk about <laughs> five times. Jesus, um, he didn't yeah, he didn't need a lip reader as well to yeah. to see what he was saying. But um, th- there's do we think it's a bit of a farce that Leinster have played almost all of their important games in both the URC and the Champions Cup this season at home, including all knockout stages. It's a huge farce. You know what? It's, it's almost as big a farce as charging that bloke 10 grand for, for that tweet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Are, we, are, we, are, we, are we going there? Okay, have we chatted about this yet? No, well, no we're, we we're, going, we're going there. We're going we're going there. Listen, yeah. listen, I'm going to be honest here. July 1st, I'm still contracted with the RFU. Okay. And then I'll come back. And then I'll come back and we'll see. <laughs> so, so, right. so your calls you on July 2nd. <laughs> your contract at La Rochelle will cover whatever you it's lose. Two, two months. So don't worry about it, mate. Don't worry about it. You can let loose here and tell us what a load of bullshit. <laughs> and I'm sure I know this bloke, right? And he owns this company called Mustard. He's like involved in a company called Mustard. And they put a, it's a picture proxy. Up it's a proxy war. Oh, okay. yeah, that's oh, good. It, it was so weird. They put this picture up of you with a cigar. And I thought, I know, I swear I know someone that's involved in that company. Familiar. Familiar. Listen, I had nothing to do with that. I've got nothing to do with the Instagram. I got nothing if the other guys that have no ownership. So, and, I, and I haven't even spoke to him in, in months, so I don't know what went on there. I, I reshared uh, it as much as I could because I thought it was all you it. <laughs> that was um, one of the best things I've ever seen. That was that was crazy, mate. Like what a crazy, a crazy old couple of weeks that was. Oh, my it, Twitter, my Twitter blew up. I reckon I got more tweets and involvements in Twitter than I than I did when I got selected for England, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, but it was. It was absolutely re- ridiculous. I can't, I can't say that. No Who um? What, that. what, what right. charity? Stop what charity did you support though? So, um, so, yeah, it's not it's not completely the end of the world. I tell you, what, the the good thing is, uh, which is why I was lucky enough to do it, was uh, Exeter Chiefs Foundation. Um, obviously, look after a load of charities in Devon and Cornwall, but there's one that they they've started up over the last couple of years, which is called the Benevolent Fund, and they basically it's a charity for any ex Chief players that you know ever get into trouble, ever need help, ever need you know they need anything at all. Um, the club will take care of it and pay for it. Um, and, and basically make sure your family are okay, make sure you're okay, make sure everything you've got uh, is, is taken care of, everything you need is taken care of. So, you know, like when they said that obviously I get to choose the charity that I that I get to put the money towards, um, obviously this is the one, the main one I wanted to to, to look after and, and pay towards. <clears throat> still, I'd rather not pay 10 grand, but still. <laughs> Silver line and all that. It's good for a good cause, mate. It's a good cause. And, you know, you know what? You should learn. Don't tweet, guys. Don't don't tweet stuff like that. Ah, bullshit. People need... No, no, no. He's been successfully indoctrinated. He's no, been stuck on It was, it was, it was awful of me. I should never have tweeted that. Like, I, was, I was completely disrespectful. Um, don't drink and tweet. <laughs> but uh, that's the thing, though. Like, I'm, like, mm. like if, I never want to disrespect any new referees. You know, I'm not about that. And everyone that knows me, is that's not what I was intended. That's not what the tweet intended to do. And I... And I, I'm pretty good friends with some of the referees and stuff. You know, obviously, like you know, you you play so many years, you get to know them all pretty well. Um, so that was the last thing that want, I wanted to come across. And I know a lot of them, their hands are being tied in terms of you know world rugby and and all this sort of stuff. That they're they're being told how to referee the game, and and I'm all for player safety as well. But you just see so many games getting ruined at the moment, and it's just like like you know for you when it, when it's your team and. And the opposition get a red card. It's the you know, heat at the moment, and it's like, oh, we'll do anything to win. Um, but then when it's not your team, and and you got a red card on, or when it is your team, you got a red card on your team. It's it's our, it's just ruining games at the moment. And obviously, we've all played in both sides where it's happened to both of us. Um, 
so yeah, it's just it's just not nice to see. So like, I was never intended to disrespect Kyle Dixon or anything like that. That's not what I wanted, and I didn't want anyone else to to tweet or to tweet him and you know talk about the decision that he made on the field. Thanks to Ryan, we have gone directly away from the original question: was <laughs> is there a conspiracy <laughs> around Leinster getting all of their fucking home games? In no, he said it was a matches? farce. I said it was a farce. Okay. So if we take that into context, everyone, right, they've had two trophyless seasons. They've basically got the whole Irish team and they were heavy favourites to win both competitions both years. They choked this final, having led by 17 points. They've lost three finals since 2019. They still haven't won the URC since its inception. Or that's, you know, they did finish top in the regular season in both years. Potentially a bit of an unfair call, but would we say they've turned into the biggest chokers in modern rugby? Who's answering this, Max? Let's get Max in trouble. Max, go on. Unload. Are you getting in trouble? I don't like it. I hate it. I wish I had I wish I had the pedigree to be a big choker. That's still great, and it being like the ultimate number two. Are they the biggest chokers? Not really, because a lot of those guys have already won that that trophy a few times, haven't they? I would say, I would say they're not really chokers in that regard. No one's helping I, you, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm. Hey, listen, I'm staying quiet. We choked in the fucking Challenge Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a top of the table since '89. <laughs> so I'm, I'm stand out of this because I just know exactly what happens when I say oh. something about this. It just comes back and bite me and, right. And to be fair, mate, we've, right now, we, we've got to be... a few finals ourselves, and we yeah, we've not picked them all up. So I, I'm the same. I'm not going to say too much here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, listen, when it, questions, when, though, weren't there? Like the management will be getting scrutinised now. The press are all over him. It's it's going to be weird now. And it this is where it starts to become a thing, doesn't it? It can become some kind of some kind of mental complex for a team when it when this sort when this sort of thing happens a few times. But I wouldn't say they're chokers because they've already they're number one. Essentially, they're number one in the world in it, as it is the mainstay of the Irish team. Okay, well, though, with that in mind. Because, Ryan, you've said it a few times, but the psychological loss is that one, right, with the Academy boys, then losing to Munster, then obviously losing to La Rochelle by such a small margin. Most of those guys, particularly in the European final, are, make up most of that island team. Does that play at all into your mindset, considering Ireland have gone past the quarterfinals uh, in a Rugby World Cup? Do we think? One hundred percent. There's no. They, they can't. They're not going to win anything at the Rugby World Cup. France will win the World Cup, and I've called it here. That's like France will win. <laughs> Ireland. Ireland will choke. I reckon when they get Mix there. Them. What am I doing? Clan. What am I doing? <laughs> no, you've lost your head. You've lost speak, your head. You you've lost your head. You have. <laughs> I shouldn't have had that beer yeah, at 10 is, he's just, uh... Genuinely though, like that will that will play on their minds when they get into big games. It does, and they keep choking. And I reckon uh oh I've said it, France will win the World Cup. Who Nelsy, who's winning the World Cup? If you, if you take England out of it, because you don't expect England to win. No, obviously a lot of my friends still played. Like I, I want England to do the, the best they can. I'm sure they can win it. Uh, uh but I, the way France have been, the way they they've played over the last year or so, and the fact is in France as well, is you, you can imagine what their support and their fans are going to be like for every single one of their games, mm. and you can imagine as a as an away team, you know, going to play them at any stadium is going to be oh my, it'll be it'll be mental. I reckon it'll be like sick. The obviously the best atmosphere I played in would be last season Six Nations France France away for their Grand Slam winning game. And honestly, I've never heard noise like it. Like me and Freddie Stewart are in the backfield, and he's two meters away from me, and I'm talking to him, and he's just like, and I'm like, like what, 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 what can you do? Like when they're shouting and cheering that much, you can imagine what it's like if if that if you've got that behind you. Yeah. And and that's not and that's not even mentioning how good their players are and stuff, and how informed they are at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Like, I think South Africa again, they'll be up there. Um, because they are still very, very good. New Zealand, you can never, never, ever not not bet against them. Um, but yeah, for me, England or France, it's got to be. You'll be down there, won't you? you you'll be in, in your new house. We, we miss, yeah. The, the ex chateau. Yeah, it's an old peerage house. I'll be happy to check on the beach, mate. I don't mind. I'm going to set a task for me next year. I'm going to get in a seat every single day of the year. 
Yeah, I, I would, but I live in Scotland. So, so. Yeah, <laughs> Tell me about the testimonial, Nolsey. We're doing a glorified uh, touch tournament. So it's not, you see all these games, a lot of boys have games in their testimonial, but those games always go the same way. <laughs> some boys are going 110%, some boys are going 20%. Uh, and and then you've got the rest of the lads that are just want to be there for the booze. So obviously Red Bull being Red Bull and, and, and me and Stady being our, ourselves, we wanted to do something a bit different where we basically want to do a real good touch tournament. Uh, um, so we have the rules. Some of the rules are you need a couple of your women's players in there. So you need two two women's players involved. Um, you also need two people that have never touched a rugby ball uh, in their life. <laughs> That's good. Um, Mark. <laughs> you away that fuck no, off. He went to Ra Ra Radley, old boy. <laughs> so they we, forced we, them to get on the quad. <laughs> we've got a few uh, a few guests coming down and, and being involved in it. Cole Dixon uh, reffing it. I, I haven't asked him yet. I might try. I might see if he can come down for it. I <laughs> now you should. That, that's, uh, yeah, the, that's olive, the olive. The olive extend the olive branch. <laughs> yeah, part of your rehabilitation program. It's surely as soon as. Drunk Tank Dicky didn't potentially get his contract. Was he like, can I come in on the make like a plus three on your like Slady you and because where's my testimonial? Wait, imagine Dicky being involved in minus Slady's testimonial. I don't know. Here, look. Dicky! Dicky! We're going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, this is this is this is gold. This is absolute golden. You've got two questions for him, haven't you? There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here we, oh, oh yes. Guns. There's the big fella. What <laughs> questions you got for me then? What, what happened? What, ha- what, what exactly happened? happened? <laughs> if you can, re- if you no, can no, recollect. Come no, no, back, come back. <laughs> I, can, I can neither confirm nor deny. So you just failed the net medical, like me. I mean, there was some bits that were true, some bits that weren't. <laughs> yeah. So can I find out, right, did you have a good night out before the medical? I had one or two shandies, yeah. Yeah. Lager tops. Lager tops, good choice. <laughs> yeah, lager tops, very safe, very safe, yeah. And uh, and so you turned up to the medical. Yeah. It, on time? Yeah. In handcuffs? Nope. And then failed the medical or failed well, the I think I, Well, got a bit of nerve damage, so it's like it's slowly coming back. And I don't think they... They could have risked me not coming back for the start of the season, I think. And why are you not involved in this testimonial? Yeah, no, no, I, no, mate. My face ain't good enough. <laughs> With Slater or me, that's what he said. Silly yeah, twat. Oh. I, I think you would have fit in there. Could it be, what was it, 12, 13, and then just like a two on the side? Could have been yeah, 16, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come into half a man and then you fucking do me over, you twat. Stop <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. me mate. Top man, top man. Hey, that was good. They weren't expecting that, were you, lads? No, no, very good. No, it's like the fucking car- carpool karaoke. Do you remember last time when it was you, uh, J- Johnny Hill, and Dicky in the in the cab oh, yeah, on the way to England? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was actually class. Let's actually get a couple of things that we had kind of planned to ask Jack, but quickly for him. You, you obviously played him with what two hundred times in the Prem. We want to know first thing that comes to your head. Best moment on the pitch? First time we won the Prem against Wasps when we went to extra time. Uh, Stino got those last couple of couple of kicks uh, to get us into the extra time and to win the game for us. Um, yeah, to lift the trophy the first time was unbelievable. Worst moment on the pitch? Losing to Saracens just before the World Cup when I hurt my ankle and my knee because um, that was the year we felt like we, we could have done them. Most pissed you've ever been on a night out? This last end of season social is obviously our last big one, one that we properly ripped into. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot of us going. So we went, for, and we weren't playing in the London Irish game on a Saturday. <clears throat> we went Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then flaked out Monday afternoon. So yeah, we went pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Biggest fight you've witnessed on a night out? Well, I wouldn't say fight, <clears throat> but I've never seen a man so angry. It was. Probably last season, Henry Slade. You know when you just get the room wrong, and uh, we all we went to the awesome. bingo, which was pretty cool. Um, and we we're all we we're all pretty merry. Like we all had a couple, and it was all right. It was pretty chill. But Slade, he got like he got bad, <laughs> bad, bad. And then for, for a start, he told us all the boys went to one club. <clears throat> he told me, Dave Ewers, Ian Witten, and Big Raw that 
we the elder boys were in the other club, so he dragged us down to his other club, and we were the only ones down there. So he managed to sort out a booth, which was very nice of him. There was a nice bottle of alcohol on the table for us, and he was the only one drinking it. He was the only one. Well, we were all drinking it, but he was the only one smashed. Anyway, he then decides to turn around and out of nowhere just tackle Dave Ewers. Like, I mean, spear tackle him. Dave Ewers stumbled back, ribs into the table, um, like, obviously hurt him. Slady got up, was laughing, trying to dance around. Dave just got up, didn't speak to anyone, left the club, was gone. And we were like, we obviously witnessed it and we were like, he's pissed off there now. Um, so then, yeah, we had to tell Slady on Monday morning what he had done and he didn't remember a thing, but he was obviously very gutted. But, you know, when you just, you just got the whole thing wrong and it was just like, and yeah. that, that wasn't the only thing. He was then sick in the club. We then had to tidy it up because we didn't want to get in trouble. So we spent an hour tidying it up. We put it all, all, all of it in the, this jug that was on the table. Then he kicked over the jug. And then we were just like, for fuck's sake, lady, what is wrong with you, mate? What is wrong? So, yeah, he, he got that night wrong. Most embarrassing thing to happen to you on the pitch? Oh, again, way in France. First cap. Uh, kick off. Uh, went over, went through Joe Launsbury's arms. I obviously couldn't see the ball. Dropped it. Uh, bounced over into their hands, they passed it wide, scored in the far corner. Welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to international rugby, Jack Noll. It's 19, 20, 19 years old, whatever it was. Oh, Great. Oh. Oh. Biggest punch up you've been involved in on the pitch? I'm a lover, not a fighter. I like, I, I, I like to have a bit of fun. You know, I just go and grab someone that I know pretty well and get them in the headlock and be like, "Wait, what the fuck are you going to do about it? And then they get back angry. And then... Yeah, I like those ones. <laughs> they make me laugh. I like doing that as well. I try and do like, you know, like a slow dance, just throw them into a waltz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have a bit of giggle and they realise Yeah, and then they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get involved. Because I, wear, because I wear a lid, if I get involved in those sort of stuff, the first thing they do is just grab your lid and it... Oh, that's annoying. It's so annoying. Yeah. So I'm just like... Oh, yeah, I went for a phase of just trying to break everyone's... Lid. Yeah, see, there we go. Prime example. You, yeah. <laughs> Like any, because I, I used to think, I no, but I used to think, right, they obviously wear this because they're conscious of their head. And, and so if you snap it and you've not got a spare one, then it's going to affect you <laughs> mentally. So I used to try and snap them off and snap yeah. the bottom bits so no, you couldn't wear them. Like, what a horrible person. Mate, Jack oh, stashed oh. up with those Red Bull lids. He's all good, bro. Yeah, you were had hundreds in yeah, your yeah, bags. Been like, yeah. Yeah, it gives you wings, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest tick you've ever played against. Well, actual, right, actual dick or his dick? Uh, no, more of like a nuisance rather than the biggest slong you've ever seen. Okay. I heard extra chiefs have a good dick shower and a bad dick shower. <laughs> well, well, yeah, to be fair, I can confirm that because I'm no longer at the club, so. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> Which one are you in? Uh, you've got uh, small dick, big dick, and a mega dick, and I'm in mega dick. <laughs> <laughs> who's in the joking. club who's in the club joking we don't have we don't have those showers at all, all no it's, it's just a myth Mark you told me you told me you do that at the BBC as well <laughs> yeah classic we all do it all the presenters just come on in it's like get in the shower <laughs> out. you stood by the door nope nope no, yeah. no, yeah, you, come you, on no. in get in here now <laughs> um, who's the biggest dick other than Wills obviously now after a story uh, Nick White and he's one of my best friends, mate. But I would not like to... Well, I, obviously, I've played against him a few times. And I can understand why the Saris boys hated him so much because I've seen it firsthand now. But he is amazing when he's on your team. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a good dick, though. I'll tell you, he, he, he's a good dick. Uh, dirtiest player you've ever played alongside or against? Oh, dirtiest player I've ever played alongside. Uh, probably a player when, back when I was younger. He's called uh, Jeremy Henshaw. We used to call him JTC. Oh, I know what that stands for. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy the cunt Hem Hemshaw. <laughs> the best player you've ever played against? Cora Betty or Tua Sova. Like, obviously, wing on wing. Uh, Cora Betty in the summer of Australia. Honestly, he's the hardest bloke I've yeah. ever tried to tackle. Like, he's just he's just solid. Concrete. Like, the amount of times, like, obviously, kick off, normally it's winger on winger if you kick it in the right spot. But, like, I've obviously got a 50, 60 metre run up to get him. And he stood there like that. And I've chucked everything into him. 
and he literally just stands there like he he might fall on the floor but he'll get an offload away and I'm just like what the hell like how I've just chucked my whole body weight into you and you're just standing there looking at me um so yeah probably someone like Corvey he's playing in that world 15 game this in, next week I know I was I was meant to be playing in it oh with, with, with your knee yeah, yeah I, was, I was playing in the Barbars team oh he'll so, come you'll get another chance no, well, hopefully I'll have a few chances now. Um, but no, I've gutted, mate. Um, absolutely gutted. But like I said, that goes back to the whole decision of make sure I was in a good spot to go down to my new team. Um, so I had to get my knee done. So yeah, my agent was like, you're not playing. Simple as that. I was like, World 15 team. Oh. Piotel, Randrandra, Corin Betty, Falau. Yeah, that, yeah. Line that is back line is loaded. I'm lucky. Our boss team looks pretty handy as well, though. Yeah, 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 it'll be tasty. It's gonna Red, be good. Yeah, Imagine coming up against Corin Betty with a hangover. Oh, <laughs> that's what I want to be there. <sighs> well, sadly, boys, that is all the time we've got left for this Shame week. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> huge is. thank you to uh, to Max and Ryan, and a particularly huge thanks uh, uh, to Jack. Best of luck wherever you end up next season. I told you, I think I'm going to Par Amateurs in Penzance. So if anyone wants to come down and support us next year, then I'll get you free tickets, all right? Yeah, I'll oh, sort of. Wait, oh, good. Oh, just a quick note, because I've been doing this with everything. This is the last time I'll do the podcast as a rugby player. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not actually a rugby player anymore. Oh. <laughs> He's unless, doing it for everything. Unless no one gets me a job down at La Rochelle for free. I- I, I, I don't know what you're on about because I, I, oh, I don't know. He's not, or he's not going there. That was it. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all for listening and we will see you all next week. Cheers, guys. <laughs>